I know you, don't I? I'm usually very good with names, but I'll be damned if I haven't forgotten yours. You stole my cab. I never stole anything in my life. I hailed a cab on Park Avenue this afternoon, and uh, before I could get in it, you stole it. You're the guy who tried to get my cab. <laughs> I knew I knew you, yeah. You scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Come to think of it, it was awful easy to get a cab during rush hour. Forget it. Oh, I can't forget it. I am sorry. I had no idea that was your cab. I, you gotta believe me. I, I hope I didn't cause you any inconvenience. Let me make it up to you somehow, huh, please? How about a nice hot dog and a beer? <laughs> uh, no, thanks. Just a hot dog, then? No, I'm fine, thank you. Couple of beers. Uh, we'll kill some time. Suck back a few brew, you know, have a pickled egg or two. Huh? Sound good? Not really. I'm fine. How about a nice bag of jujubes? jubes hmm? I'm kind of picky about what I eat. Toffees, then. What a nice bag of toffees. Everybody loves toffees. I love toffees. <laughs> Sir, is that seat taken? Some sourdough bread. They make it fresh, you know, in San Francisco. They sell it at all the airports. It's very good. You probably have some already. I usually carry a couple loaves with me. <laughs> but if you want, I'll get you a loaf. Sir, please. Just let me know. I'm here. <laughs> I knew I knew you. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> Can you move, please? Ugh. Gotta tee it up. <laughs> oh. Take a mulligan on that one. Two points. This is something you should have discussed with the ticket agent. I couldn't discuss it with the ticket agent because I didn't know he put me in coach. I'm sorry, I can't help you. First class is full. I have a first class ticket. You have a coach seat assignment. Hi, Larry. Hi, Liz. Mm. <laughs> uh, here okay, or how about over there? Oh, here, there, anywhere's fine. Pardon me. Save your boarding pass and you'll get a refund on the difference. I don't want a refund. I want a seat in first class where I was booked and ticketed over a month ago. Just a moment, sir. Where's that Pepsi I ordered? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'll get that for you right away. This isn't coach, honey. Okay. Hop to it. Yes, sir. Look, I have had just about enough of you. Now, take your seat. Oh, you've had about enough of me. First you delay me, then you bump me. I can't wait to see what happens next. Stop it, please. Shh. Madam, if you don't continue to eat your children, I will. Excuse me. So the, the sooner you take your seat, the faster you'll take off.
Is this a coincidence or what? <laughs> Have a seat. <sighs> sure. <clears throat> oh, you all right? My bag is there, yeah. I'm sorry. There you go. I never did introduce myself. Del Griffith, American Light and Fixture, Director of Sales, Shower Curtain Ring Division. I sell shower curtain rings. Best in the world. And you are? Uh, Neil Page. Neil Page. Pleased to meet you, Neil Page. Neil. Now, that's an odd name. You don't hear that name too often. Neil. Neil. Would that be a Gaelic name? I think it is. I think it's a Gaelic name, Neil. I'm pretty sure. So what do you do for a living, Neil Page? Marketing. Marketing. Super. Super. Fabulous. Isn't that nice? I dabble a little bit in that game myself. Hmm. I'll show you. Little thing for my company. It's an idea I had. It's a calendar. It's not an original idea or anything. I think I added some original thought to it, however. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Um, there's my shower curtain rings up there, and I added a pretty-looking gal in there and uh, tied in a theme with what she's wearing to the, to the month, you know, January and February, of course, with little Valentines and shamrocks for March and, of course, April showers. <laughs> it is cute, isn't it? It's fun. It's a fun thing. I, you know, I thought, you know, the customers seem to like it. I hand them out. They're giveaways. I'd like to give this to you. No, that's all right. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd like you to have it. You might need Please, it. no, please, for me to you. All right. Thank all right? You. Yeah, put it in your garage next to the workbench. It's just a fun thing. That's all it is. <clears throat> you know, if you've got shower curtains at home, there's a 50-50 chance that the rings holding it up were sold to your supplier by me. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is that something? Mm -hmm. I like the kid. You know, that if it weren't for our shower curtain rings, Janet Lee never would have caught her lunch in Psycho. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> Did you see that flick? Psycho? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like to joke, but that baby was no joke. When that movie hit the screen, people saw that shower murder. It left a crap stain on the reputation of shower curtains the size of Texas. Pebble glass shower doors took a big bite out of our sales for several years after that. We're doing all right now. We're on our feet. We're fine. We're OK. Young people today buying their first homes don't have the same phobia about shower curtains their parents did. That Hitchcock, he was the Dickens, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was terrible. Da -dum, da -da 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 -dum, da -dum. Did you see birds? Uh, yeah, I saw that. Rod Taylor, Tippy Hedren. Mm -hmm. Similar story about that movie. Another Hitchcock picture. Well. A friend of mine up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, was a wholesaler for parakeets. You know, big warehouse full of birds. This movie hits the streets. My God. Couldn't unload them. Everyone was afraid of birds. <laughs> they thought, you know, they're going to attack them in their homes or something like this. Boy, he swallowed a lot of budgies that year. <laughs> Do you use uh, curtains or doors in your home? Curtains or doors? Doors? Doors. Doors. Well, that's no sweat off my nose. I'm just happy I got somebody to talk to. You know what I love about flying? It's the ability to have a great conversation with someone. I always find when I'm on an airplane, I get a great conversation going with somebody. It's, it's exciting. I don't know what it is. People seem to loosen up on an airplane. You know, it's two people talking, really getting to know each other for a short period of time. It really makes the flight go faster, I find. You know, people will tell you more on an airplane. Well, that, that sometimes in their whole life, talking to their spouse or their best friends. 
people have opened up to me in the past. Oh, God, yeah, and me to them. And I, I you know, I've chatted a little bit myself, too, you know. You can you can trust people somehow, because right? you'll never see them again. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's fun. It's exciting, you know, and that's what makes flying good for me. Now, some people are readers. Some people will not talk. Some people just like to sit and read, and that's fine, too. I mean, um, me, I prefer a conversation, but I like to read. I just finished my book an hour ago. Filthiest goddamn thing I ever read. Oh, terrible. You know, but when you travel as much as I do, you run out of reading material. If it's been published, I've read it. Fiction, nonfiction, classics, Robbins, Krantz, Iacocca, you name it, I read it. I was on a layover in Buffalo about a week ago. I was so hard up. I read a biography on Prince, you know, the internationally known rock star. That's not his real name, by the way. It's Rogers Nelson. Look, I don't want to be rude, but uh, I'm not much of a conversationalist, and I'd really like to finish this article. A friend of mine wrote it, so... Don't let me stand in your way. Please, don't let me stand in your way. The last thing I want to be remembered as is an annoying blabbermouth. <laughs> you know, nothing grinds my gears worse than some chowderhead who doesn't know when to keep his big trap shut. They've got no smoking signs. They ought to have no talking signs. There'd have been plenty of times when I want to switch that sucker on, believe you me. If you catch me running off of the mouth, just give me a poke in the chops. <clears throat> oh! Oh, that feels good. Oh, God, I'm telling you. My dogs are barking today. Oh, I had a bad case athlete's foot about a week ago. It's just drying up now. A lot of skin is just itchy as all hell. Oh, that feels good. Whew. <coughs> My father was a salesman. He always used to say, you know, come noontime, take the socks off, reverse them. It gives your uh, foot a little break for the rest of the day, you know, kind of a refresher there. Ah. Oh, that feels better. Oh, yeah. The heck happened to your briefcase? A vehicle run over it? Car. Oh, that's a shame. That's a nice looking bag. That's top of the line stuff, isn't it? That's your top quality. You mind if I look at that? Oh, that's uh, it really, you really shouldn't because uh, it's broken and it might fall apart. How much did you pay for that? Was well, it a gift? Yeah. Mine too. Company gave me mine. <clears throat> It was a gift for getting the shower ring contract for the U.S. Navy. You know how many rings that baby was worth? No idea. Take a guess. I really wouldn't know. Oh, take a guess. No, I really don't. Take know. a I guess. It's fun. A thousand. <laughs> Try thirty-seven million. Mm. Huh? It's a lot of rings. What I was thinking was this. Then over the next few years, you know, several millions of sailors will be using showers with our rings. Well, if these sailors take the time to inquire about the quality of the rings, and they feel they're a good ring, when they get out of the service and they consider shower curtain rings, they'll select ours. I like to look at the long run, you know. Would you excuse me? I'd really like to concentrate on this. I'm being a blabbermouth, aren't I? No, no, not at all. I am. I'm being a blabbermouth. No, you can say it. It's all right. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Say it. I'm no, a blabbermouth. I don't want to say that. Come on. No, say it. I'm a blabbermouth. I don't want to say, say it. No, I'm a blabbermouth. All right. I'm all right. A blabbermouth. You're a blabbermouth. <laughs> hey, you asked me to say that. Well, you said it because you meant it. No, no. I only said, said it because you asked me. No, I just said it because you meant it. I, I know that. It's all right. And, and believe you me, I'm not going to talk to you through the whole flight. I'm sorry. This is button right now. I won't even talk. Taken off. Why? I'll bet you three bucks in my left nut Chicago socked in.
I'll be right with you. I'll be right with you. All right, listen up, everybody. If you all don't quit asking me for stuff, nobody's getting a thing. I always order a special meal. Mm. On this airline, we go with a seafood salad. On American, well, I'll have their uh, kosher plate. A little slice of salami, some roast beef, some turkey, dark rye bread. Very nice. Now, if I'm flying United, I'll say I'm a youngster. I'll give me the kitty plate. That's a hot dog, a bag of potato chips, a gherkin. A nice little bag of Oreo cookies. Mmm. What do you think this is? Ooh. Well, about seven hours ago, that was lasagna. But with all the delays, they heat it, reheat it, reheat it again until, uh, well, it looks like that. I had a friend once who worked in the kitchens here, you know, preparing the food. She lopped the top of her finger off slicing carrots one night. She looked in the pot. She looked for it and looked for it, never could find it. She thinks it was served on the Singapore run. Wasn't that something? Do you believe that, that they would do that? Look. If you elect not to proceed with that, I'd gladly take it off your hands. Thanks. How about your bun? No. Uh, it's too hard. Sir? Sure. No. Sir? Excuse me. Would you like a bun? No, it's fine. Yeah, the flag's fun. No, no. <laughs> Would you like the bun? Yeah, what's that? I'm offering you a bun. Speak up. You want the bun? No, I just got started. He said, do you want the bun? Oh. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> there you Thank go. You. How about another salad? No, 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 no. Take this salad. He doesn't want any. He's not hungry. Some salad dressing. I'd like the brownie. The brownie? No, sure. No, I'd like that. Do you want the brownie? He won't give you the brownie. He's got a sweet tooth. <laughs> Isn't he a nice fella? Hmm? I guess you're not going to want your brownie now. No. Mind? Would you like half? Oh, would you? Certainly. <laughs> there you go, the big side. Where the hell is the motel? Doobie, is it much farther? Not much. Why didn't you take the interstate? Said your friend had never been around here, so I just figured he'd like to um, look around. I don't see nothing on the interstate but interstate. It's the middle of the night. I know, I know, but he's proud of his town. You know, that's a damn rare thing these days. What's your friend's name there, Dale? Oh, this is Neil Page. Didn't I introduce you? Neil. Neil, Neil, Neil. Neil down. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever call you Neil down? <laughs> no. Well, then, well, they do now. <laughs> Neil down, you know uh, Harvey Knows, Quaitman? Ever hear of that guy? He was a bodyguard for Al Capone near Chicago. 
Found his trigger finger in a pickle barrel right in that factory right there. See that one right up in the hill? Oh, I didn't know that. I'll be damned. There's my sister's house right there. She doesn't live there no more. Some weird guy lives there now. I'm telling you, that guy can't figure him out. He uh, keeps, uh, I don't know, an albino pit bull and a two-headed snake right in his bedroom. A two-headed snake? Mm-hmm. I have never seen a two-headed snake. Neil, have you ever seen a two-headed snake? Yes, I have. You did? Where? Arizona Desert Museum. I'll let you see it for five bucks. I saw it for free at the Arizona Desert Museum. Want to see it again? Hey, kneel down. Coming up over here. It's where I lost my virginity. Oh, where's that? Right there. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. Heifer. Pardon? Heifer. Barbara Heifer. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Got you, Neil Dan. <laughs> you got me too. Didn't you think you meant a cow? Didn't you think that for a minute? I still think it was a cow. Was that Neil Dan? Nothing, just nothing. <clears throat> you look out that window and you tell me what you see, huh? Nothing. There's a field of nothing right there. What you doing, man? What you doing? Don't touch my women. Don't touch my girls. Don't touch anything in this cab. This is my cab. Don't touch it. Who the hell do you think you are? You know, I could pull right off right over here now and kill you. You'd be my first, because you're coming that close right now. Nobody would know. Nobody would know, because we're out of nowhere. You'd be history, man. You'd Doobie, just... Doobie, please, just settle down, all right? But I could just kill that fellow and nobody know. Nobody would know. Doobie, you're scaring Neil here. I don't give a damn whether I'm scaring him or not, man. I could kill him, and I want him to know that, that I could kill him. I'm not saying that I would kill him. I'm saying I could kill him. Of course you could kill him. It'd be easy for you to kill him. All you'd have to do is pull into one of these deserted roads here. Go and grab your tire iron and smash Neil in the head a few dozen times. Then throw him in front of your car and then just go over and back and over and back and crush him. Why don't you do that? Would you feel better then? But that's just silly, isn't it? When you think about it, isn't that a silly, evil thought? I don't think it's so silly. It's very silly. All right, now say you're sorry to Neil. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Neil? Neil? I'm sorry. All right, now, then I think let's just settle down. This is such silly talk here. Let's just enjoy the, the beautiful countryside. How much farther is it? It's right up here. We're getting there unless you want to get out right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Neil, down? You want to get out now? Excuse me, uh, yeah. Doobie. Uh, how come the meter only says $10? Well, it's changed over once already. That's $110. You looking at my hair? No. Couldn't see your hair anyway. It's under your hat. You're coming that close, fella. That close. You want to get out right over here? We can do some stuff right now. It's not a hat. You think this is a wig? Oh, no. No, no. This is my real hair, fella. I know. This is my real hair. Is that your real hair? Is that your real head? Doobie, he didn't know. All right? He didn't know. Now we're friends? All right. Now well, let's just let's just go to the motel. Say, didn't we just go by your sister's house again? Doobie, right. are you going around in circles again? <laughs> You're gonna like this motel. Nice and clean. Uh, here we are. That's uh, $130 plus a dollar for the trunk. I'll take care of the trunk, it's mine. Take care of the luggage, will you, Doobie? <sighs> 
Stick with me. in here. That's okay. You're not bothering me. How long are you going to be? Yeah, I'll just be a couple minutes. I got a couple things I got to do. Yeah, it's a good thing to floss. I, I'm really running out of hot water. If you could hurry up. Why? What's the problem? It's just, it's just getting cold, and I want to get out. Go ahead. Prairie Pizza delivery here. Come on in, the door's open. Yeah. Uh, sir, the door is locked. No, it's open. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the door's locked. No, it's open. I unlocked it. Well, uh, maybe uh, somehow it's got locked again because it is. What's wrong with you? Come on, open the door. Door is locked. Put a little muscle into it. <laughs> Sir. What? Let me tell you something, all right? The door to your motel room is locked. What's the matter? Are you a weakling or something? Don't call me a weakling, all right? Put your hand on the knob. Turn it to the right. Push with your shoulder. Come on, man. I'm just standing out here with your pizza. Come on, you asshole. Hey, watch your mouth. It's locked. It's just stuck, that's all. I have to get out, Dell. All right, all right. I'll go get the pizza. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Swifty? What? What's the problem? Some asshole in here. I'm standing here for 15 minutes. He won't open the door. This piece is getting cold. Really? 
Yeah! What room are you looking for? 114. Power jammies. Never mind the jammies, all right? Come on. Just toss it on the bed, will you? How much do I owe you? Uh, $19. $19? For a pizza pie? Yeah. It's got corn, garbanzo beans. It's deluxe. Jeez. You wait right there. Whew. Nineteen, you say? Yes. There you go. That's for you. Put it towards your college fund. This is a twenty-dollar bill. Yes, it is. That pizza was like nineteen bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's only a five percent tip. <laughs> You're very good with figures. You're going to enjoy college. You know what I call a five percent tip? Well, where I come from, we call it a dollar. Yeah. Well, where I come from, I call it an insult. An insult? No, no, no. An insult is what your father did to your mother to get you. <laughs> That's an insult. Oh. Good night. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. All right, all right, all right. All right. Good night. Well, look, uh, thanks a lot for the, the big tip, buddy. And when your wife gets out of the shower, why don't you shave her chest? Hey, just get going, all right? Go on. <laughs> Man, drugs? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Put the police on you. Soup's on! Mmm. Hey, you little bastard. There's a slice missing! Punk. You realize you used all the towels? I'm a big guy. Those are small towels. I'm sorry. Because it wasn't too neighborly of me. And almost all the toilet paper? So it's New York hot dogs. They go right through me. <laughs> I'm guilty. Left the bathroom a filthy mess. I'm not used to having a roommate.
What smells? Pizza. Kim, while you were in the shower. That's pizza? Mm-hmm. It's delicious, too. I saved you a slice. I asked you to order me a salad. They didn't have any salads. What about the fettuccine aglio olio? They never heard of fettuccine. I had them put some extra vegetables on there for you. Hearts of palm? Mm-mm. What's the matter? It has a wonderful shitty taste. If you don't want it, I'll have it. No, I'll eat it. I haven't eaten in nine hours. You want to wash it down with a beer? Yeah. I'll join you. It's warm. Hey, it comes out warm. What the hell's the difference how it goes in? <laughs> Cheers. Ah! I'd switch pillows with you, but I'm allergic to sponge. I got a bad allergy to it. I'd be sneezing all night with that thing. That's why I carry my own pillow. It's hyperallergenic. <clears throat> I had no idea those beer cans were going to blow like that. You left them on a vibrating bed. What did you think was going to happen? It's been a long day. It just, it just didn't occur to me. Occur to you, so I have to sleep in a puddle of beer. You want to switch? No, I just want to sleep. Me too. I am bushed. <sighs> Good night. Good night. What are you doing? Having a butt. In bed. Yeah, you got a problem with that? A big problem. Oh, don't worry, I'm not gonna fall asleep. I'd rather not risk it. I really don't want to run screaming through the lobby on fire. If I don't have a smoke, I'll never be able to go to sleep. I was on my way home to spend a nice holiday with my family. Instead, I'm in a motel bed with a stranger 500 miles from my house. I have no idea how or when I'll get there. I'm a patient man. I paid for the cab. I am paying for the room. You paid for the pizza, too. I did? Yeah, all I had was a $100 bill, and the kid didn't have change. You went into my wallet? Are you mad? You had no right to go into my wallet! 
Well, what was I supposed to do? I had to pay for the pizza, didn't I? You were in there taking a shower. Did you want me to send some punk kid in there to look at your dick? You stay out of my stuff. I'm not interested in your stuff. Good. In fact, I'm bored with your stuff. So you did go through my stuff? No, I didn't. Well, then how can you be bored with it? It's just a figure of speech. Bullshit! You went through my bags. Well, how did I know you're not some kind of shady guy? Huh? I'm not gonna go sleep with a stranger without knowing a little bit about him. You could have had a gun in that bag. I've been on the road a little too long not to take a precaution or two. So, did I go through your stuff? I don't know. Did you? No, I did not, and I'm mad as hell that you went through mine. Oh, big deal. You got a shirt, a suit, some dirty underwear, and some skin magazines. Those are not skin magazines. They have film criticism and restaurant reviews. And naked girls. It's okay, Neil. That's all right. That's why hotel newsstands sell magazines like that. It's for married guys like us. Are you through with your goddamn cigarette? Yes. I might as well let you know this now. I have a few more things to do before I go to sleep. All right? I've got to crack my knuckles, just a couple, scratch my ass, and adjust my underwear. Is that okay with you? Be my guest. Thank you. my pipes. Why? I'm doing it for you. Please don't. Do you like loud snoring? No. Then let me clear my pipes. <laughs> Neil? What? I have got to fart something fierce. Oh. 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 God damn it. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I told you, didn't I? I could have snuck it on you. Where are you going? I'm sleeping in the lobby. All right, I'll go to the John. Gee, if your kid spills his milk, what do you do, slap him in the head? What do you mean by that? Well, you're not a very tolerant person. I am a very tolerant person. Oh, really? Look, you've been under my skin ever since New York. You ripped off my cab. Yeah, I know all this. You paid for the hotel. You paid for the pizza. God, you're a tight ass. 
How'd you like a mouthful of teeth? Oh, and hostile, too. Nice personality combination. Hostile and intolerant. That's borderline criminal. Well, thank you, F. Lee Butthole. You, you, you spilled beer on the bed, you smoke, you left the bathroom a mess, you went through my wallet, you went through my bags. I don't have enough fingers for you. Then I have one. Well, who let you stay in the room? I even let you pay for it so you wouldn't feel like an intruder, which you most certainly are. Oh, oh I'm an intruder. Yes, you're an intruder. I was having a perfectly nice trip until you walked into my life. Oh, I walked into your life. Who was that who talked my ear off on the plane? Who was that? I'm curious. Well, who told you to book a room? I did, out of the goodness of my dumb old heart. Boy, you're an ungrateful jackass. Well, go ahead, sleep in the lobby, see if I care. I hope you wake up so stiff you can't even move. You saw me coming. You're no saint. You got a free cab, you got a free room. And someone who'll listen to your boring stories. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking, eventually I started reading the vomit bag? Didn't that give you some sort of clue, like, hey, maybe this guy's not enjoying it? You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are, that are funny or, or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. They're not even amusing accidentally. Honey, I'd, li I'd like you to meet Del Griffith. He's got some amusing anecdotes for you. Oh, and here's a gun so you can blow your brains out. You'll thank me for it. <sighs> it's, it's like going on a date with a chatty Kathy doll. I expect you to have a little string on your chest, you know, that I pull out and have to snap back. Except I wouldn't pull it out and snap it back. You would. Ah, 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 ah. I don't even know you. And you ask me if you could fart in bed. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, 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 let's put up a sail and we'll get home faster. I mean, what do you got in that, that, that trunk? Whoopee cushions and beans? I know it's not a complete set of Shakespeare. I mean, did you, did you want me to send in a kid to look at your dick, my lord? I'm 40. I mean, this is not high school. Mind if I fart? Yeah, hey, we'll both fart. Let's have a beer. We'll really fart. We'll fart all night. <laughs> I'm married. I have kids. <sighs> Give me a break. And by the way, you know, when you're, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. You want to hurt me? Go right ahead if it makes you feel any better. I'm an easy target. Come on, Mr. Executive. I like people, Neil. People are my business. They're my business because I make them my business. I'm a people person. I even like you, Neil. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I could be a cold-hearted cynic like you. But I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you want about me. I'm not changing. I like, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. Flaws, fat, and boring stories. I'm flesh and blood. I'm a human being. What? 
I apologize to you for those things I said. I'm sorry, too. Let's just forget it, all right? It's been a long, long day. Pizza nineteen dollar. <laughs> my mind. <laughs> Excuse me, son. Son? I'm in Wichita. No, I'm in a motel. I spent the night with this guy I met on the plane. What was I supposed to do? Sleep at the airport? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Coffee. I didn't feel like sleeping in a chair. Well, if that's the case, then I'll start trying to book a flight as soon as I can. Oh, can I have some of that, please? I don't have a cup. Where's my cup?